The first step is to familiarize yourself with the instrument. The lens power can be adjusted with the wheel here in the head, whereas light brightness can be adjusted by turning the cuff. There is no convention as to which colors in the window correspond to which lens powers, but for this ophthalmoscope, the black numbers correspond to the plus or convex lenses. You should use a darkened room and ask the patient to stare at a distance target, ideally just above head level. If a patient is significantly short or long-sighted with thick spectacles, it is sometimes easier to perform ophthalmoscopy through their glasses, dial up a plus H diopter lens, which should allow you to focus on your hand at 12 centimeters. Explain to the patient what you are planning to do and that you are going to get quite close in order to get a good view. Use the ophthalmoscope with your right hand to examine the patient's right eye and vice versa and place your thumb of the other hand lightly on the patient's brow to avoid bumping heads. With a plus 8 diopter lens at 12 centimeters, the anterior part of the eye should be in focus. Look for any shadows against the red reflex in the pupil which could represent, for example, either corneal foreign bodies or cataract. By moving from side to side, the practitioner can use parallax effects to decide from which level in the anterior segment the shadow is derived. If on moving from side to side, the shadow within the red reflex moves with you, then it is behind the iris plane, for instance, cataract. If the shadow moves in the opposite direction, then it is anterior to the iris plane, for instance, a corneal foreign body. Move in towards the patient, reducing the lens power as you go until a fundal feature is in focus. Although beginners to ophthalmoscopy tend to freeze when they identify a fundal feature, the trick to good ophthalmoscopy is to keep moving around. This will also help you to stay in focus on the retinal details. This ophthalmoscope also has a red free light, which can be useful in emphasizing disc anomalies such as disc drusen.